the only hope for this world. The Lord gave me this uh, message before we were notified that we would be speaking this morning. The Holy Spirit gave it to me and it matches the service. This will be a participation. Everybody will be participating in this message. It comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. In verse 23. As everybody participates, there's a strong, uh, strong possibility that people will receive healing today. Some will be touched by the power of the Holy Spirit today. Verse 23, it's the Apostle Paul speaking here. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. You'll be doing that just a little bit later. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. I've participated in Jewish Passover meals. And there's a point in the meal where the Father takes the piece of uh, bread, matzah, and uh, he breaks it. He takes, the Father takes part of the bread that was broken and he has the bread hidden and so later when the service is uh, completed when the meal is completed the children look for the missing piece of bread and the bread is brought forth it signifies what would happen to Jesus. This was a Passover meal. And when he had uh, given thanks, he break it. See, uh, Jewish matzah is not, is not a small piece of unleavened bread it's a bigger piece he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do ye in remembrance of me this ties in directly with the atonement. When the Word of God tells us that He was He was beaten for our transgressions, He was bruised, punched, beaten up. For our iniquities, our chastisement 
when he took those 39 lashes upon his back and his blood was shamed, was uh, shed. That was for your healing. Jesus paid it all. You are not your own. The Word of God declares that if you are a child of God, you have been bought with a price. So your healing is paid for. Jesus paid for your healing. Amen. Jesus yes. paid for the price for your any COVID disease, any flu disease. Any codes, any depression. Jesus paid for all. He paid the price. This do ye in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, written by his blood. This do ye as often as you drink it. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he came, till he come, till he returns again. Again, this ties directly to your atonement. Jesus paid it all. There used to be a hymn. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Jesus paid the debt that I could not pay. Jesus paid it all. Yes. Everything is paid for. Sometimes I don't really believe that we understand what that means. I used to have, before I came to the Philippines, I had a communion set. And it was uh, basically one that I carried around in my car. I used it when I went to pray for people in the hospital. One man from uh, Record Ridge County, Kentucky, he had oral cancer, and his parents asked me to pray for him. I went prepared to do communion, and I followed the instructions given in this chapter. I gave him communion, but I followed these instructions, because there are instructions on how to receive communion in the Word of God. And when I left, the doctors were able to declare 
that the oral cancer, which was so severe, they thought they were going to have to cut out his tongue to save his life. But after I followed these instructions in the Word of God, after he received the communion, the doctors declared that the cancer was totally, completely gone. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be all of the glory. But that's why these instructions are very important. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Verse 27 is very important. Wherefore, whosoever hath means it doesn't matter if you're rich or if you're poor, whosoever, if you're young or if you're old, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink the cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Did you hear that? Did you know that if you're not careful, you can take communion and be unworthy, and then you are guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it tells us in verse 28, and I've done this in hospitals. I've done this with patients. But let a man examine himself. Now that's very important for you to notice. Examine yourself. You don't, ex you don't examine uh, Pastor Castudio. You don't, ex you don't examine your husband or your wife or your son or your daughter or your neighbor. It says, but let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So when it says, let a man examine himself, that means you're wise to pause before you take, participate in the communion service. You need to give time for the Holy Spirit to search your life. Because the Bible says that one of the ways that you will not receive from God is if you have unconfessed sin in your life. There are people, they pray and it seems as if they're prayers bounce off the ceilings of their own house. There are people they pray and it seems like the heavens have turned to brass 
It seems like you can't get any, any answers from God. Well, the Bible tells us in Isaiah 59, verse 1, it's because of unconfessed sin. If you have unconfessed sin in your life, it interferes with your communion with God. The first epistle of John, verse 6, tells us that our Father in heaven is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. If we have unconfessed sin in our life, and you say that you have communion with God, it's a lie. It is not true. It says, if you confess your sin, you admit to your sin, you confess to God your problem, your situation, He will forgive you of your sin and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 tells us that the Apostle Paul had a thorn in the flesh. And he confessed it to God. You have to admit to God where you fall short. You need to be honest with Him. If you are honest with God, He tells you, my grace is sufficient. But it says, let a man examine himself, verse 28, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. We've read verse 29, but I'll read it again. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Now, how many people in here want to drink damnation to yourself. It says in verse 30, this is the reason many are sick. Many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. People die too early. They die because of unconfessed sin and eating and drinking communion with unconfessed sin in their lives as they are not worthy to receive. So, you need to examine yourself. Allow the Holy Spirit to search you. And if there's anything in your life that doesn't belong there, you need to confess it. You need to be honest with God and you need to deal with it. You need to repent. Verse 31 says, For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Did you hear that? If we would judge ourselves, we're going to take time. 
for you to examine yourself. And if there's anything in your life that doesn't belong there, repent. Make things right with God. If we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But if you are judged, you are chastened or punished of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. We're not going to do an altar call. But we are going to take time to pray. And I encourage you to close your eyes and allow the Holy Spirit to bring to your mind anything in your life that needs to be gone. Anything in your life that is an embarrassment to God that is not right. Father God, I ask now that even now the Holy Spirit that you would speak to every individual. And Father God, if there be anything in our lives that doesn't please you. We confess it. We give it to you, Father God. You know what it is. They give it unto you by faith. And you said in your word, your, your grace is enough. In our weakness, you become strong. We thank you, Father God, that we have forgiveness of sin because of your blood. We thank you, Father. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So if everybody made things right with God, everybody can participate in the communion service. I have received healing many times in communion services. I've done services where people were healed during communion. People with back aches and uh, one uh, one fella he had a torn rotator cuff in his shoulder and could not lift his hand over his shoulders. And after communion, he was able to praise the Lord with his hands over his head and absolutely no pain. People have been healed back problems, headaches, laryngitis, people have received instantaneous healings in the uh, Catholic Church still uses this. It's called the unction of the anointing. 
Protestants refer to it as last rites, where you give people an opportunity to make things right with God before they receive communion. I had an older pastor show this to me in the Word of God. And I know that it works. So, if you have sickness or healing, now that you're right with God, anytime you have sin in your life, anytime the Holy Spirit tells you you need to repent of something, be obedient to the Holy Ghost. But uh, many people are healed this way, and I've been healed this way myself, so I know that it works. When it comes to taking the, the bread and the juice, remember that scripture. The promise is that he was wounded for your uh, transgressions, for your sins, bruised for your iniquity. The chastisement, the punishment for your peace was upon him, and that by his stripes you are healed. Remember, you're talking, and you think of that as the body of Jesus, for it was broken for. Jesus paid it all. The government hasn't been paid it all. Our Savior paid it all. He paid the price for your healing. He paid the price so you don't have to be afraid. You can walk around in freedom. And he whom the sun sets free is free indeed.